Hi, welcome to Extending HealthSpan. Um, this is the HNFE course um, talking about all the interventions to um, improve HealthSpan and also um, starting writing covering the capstone requirement. So we're starting this course um, January 2022 and we're going to be using Top Hat. Um, so you'll see some questions throughout. These are going to be done during class um, as a way to follow class participation and um, pre presenting a lot of these um, low stakes practice questions to just solidify information. So I want to go through some introductions about myself, some logistics of the class, how um, uh, grading is going to be done, the assignments that are going to be expected throughout the class, and then how you're going to be creating um, your article that's going to go into the class book, Extending HealthSpan. So a little bit about myself. I live um, in Salem, Virginia, about 30 minutes away. Um, my husband is an OBGYN. We met actually in residency. We have um, two daughters, four granddaughters. Um, I have an MD degree and also a degree in uh, public health, and I'll explain um, how that came about in just a couple seconds. I'm also um, board certified um, through the Medical American Board of Medicine through internal medicine, mm -hmm. anesthesiology, and obesity medicine. This is quite recent, is the obesity medicine um, board certification. My... Um, history. Um, I was born actually in Utah, and that's where I went to medical school, uh, graduated in 1982, moved here to Virginia for a residency, and then um, came to my medical practice in Roanoke, Virginia, where I spent um, the last 35 years practicing anesthesiology. So just a little bit more of the history. Excuse my dog for barking. Gigi, stop. Um, my husband actually got interested in global medicine. Um, we first started back in 2007 going to um, Dominican Republic with a local organization and did that for a couple weeks each year for three subsequent, three subsequent years. Um, and mainly doing direct patient care. Mark would do the surgery. I would do the anesthesia. Um, he felt that it was um, important that we um, get a master's of public health degree. And our capstone class, a capstone project, my capstone project specifically, was working with a rural health clinic in Ghana. That was in 2011. And teach, here I'm teaching spinal anesthesia. From then, we went to Ethiopia to teach in 2012. I'm teaching anesthesia here to a master's of um, nursing, master's of uh, nurse anesthetist program. And then we um, worked into getting a, um, a uh, I guess a nonprofit started and um, using the public health degree, we started a maternal health um, project, maternal infant and albinism actually project as well. In addition, we at a local health center, we started the anesthesia and surgery mentoring program for local physicians in the area in Uganda and up and kept that going till 2017. In um, 2018, 19, I spent two months with Doctors Without Borders and working in South Sudan. I wanted the experience to see what these larger nonprofits, um, what they did, how they ran. So basically, um, I like to think of life as, as definitely not a straight line. You, you might start out thinking one thing and you end up going all different paths. So currently, and this is not only just because of COVID, but 
my personal goals is our personal goals are how to improve uh, quality of life. So that comes down to what health span is, um, or the duration of disease free living. And what interventions can you do um, to improve health span? And what is the scientific evidence to support that? So how do these um, questions get answered? Um, basically, it's by the scientific um, study. Um, so using scientific information, scientific studies, and using those um, to come up with clinically relevant um, recommendations for improving health span. And this class helps to answer those questions by taking that information and be able to relate that to uh, a broader audience, not just the local scientific community. Um, it's mainly to people that are in all different walks of life to understand the scientific information and um, put it towards their own improvement of their health. So the current courses I teach, um, I teach the advanced anatomy and physiology class. Um, I teach um, communicating research and leadership. This is a graduate degree program, which also takes um, scientific information and helps um, students learn how to communicate that information. So these are the, the uh, most recent small books that were created with the class in spring of 2021 and the fall of 2021. The other thing um, that I'm doing is developing a website so that these um, can, be, can be published online. And this is where um, students, their families, anyone can go to to get that information, these publications, and um, just to have access for the um, general public. So most people um, taking this course are going into the health field. Um, so what I really like to do with this is to learn how to take care of ourselves because we can't really take care of ourselves, okay, take care of others unless we're being able to take care of ourselves. So the goals, um, this is any medical provider, how to extend an, a duration of disease-free living defined as health span, and then how to tell everyone about it, including the scientists, the clinicians, general public. So on to um, the topics. What we know is that um, there are basically six general categories um, of lifestyle that can impact um, health. And it's generally through this um, epigenetics or the factors that affect your um, DNA's expression. So epigenetics is how the genes get modulated or in other words they get either um, expressed or covered up this genetic tendencies and these are the um, general categories the exercise the different types of food um, fasting has, has definitely been shown to affect um, genetic expression as well as telomere lengths stress reduction has a huge impact sleep more than you can imagine and medications and supplements can affect both epigenetic, epigenetics and telomere length. So let's go back to what um, we've learned in the past about DNA, the DNA strands, the methylation um, shown here affecting expression of genes. So epigenetics defined as um, those environmental factors that act on your DNA to express or inhibit genetic tendencies. And telomeres, 
these are these um, the ends of the chromosomes. They're considered um, the protection of your chromosomes. And with each cell division, they tend to get shorter and shorter. And that's why aging, you see people um, with aging where you start seeing the wrinkles, um, cancer development, other types of illnesses that develop with the loss of these um, tips of the chromosomes or telomeres. Well, this is a really interesting um, question where why some people seem to age faster than others. So this is just a uh, image I took a screenshot from the from the internet showing two uh, men looking totally different in age. Wilfred Brimley was 50. Here it is, it's age 50. He did this um, movie called Cocoon. And Tom Cruise was 56 years old in the latest in Mission Impossible. So drastically different um, appearances and very close to the same age. So short telomeres, protecting the cells, cell division, allowing you to stay um, looking young, both outside and inside, and then the short telomeres affecting the aging process. Dean Ornish, actually I've been following him for many years. He's um, very much into these lifestyle interventions. He did um, a pilot study, not a, so a very small number of individuals, but he um, looked at several different factors, actually four specific factors, where he um, took a group of people and um, did a diet high in um, whole foods, non-processed foods, exercise, um, stress management, where they were doing yoga, breathing, and increased social support, and showed that these interventions um, actually slowed down telomere shortening, and in some cases actually surprisingly increased telomere length. So these six factors we know affect epigenetics and telomeres. The question is, when you're making recommendations, how much of these things, what specifically, um, how hard of exercise to do, what's enough, what's too much, um, the food types, specifically what types of foods, fasting, there's lots of different types of fastings, circadian 16-8, which you know, you're fasting for 16 hours, um, eating during this eight hour period, what type of stress reduction is good, sleep, um, quantity, quality of sleep, how to improve sleep, and supplements, the different types of supplements. And um, the most recent, um, for instance, comes out in these articles like Viagra. People, they're looking at people um, taking Viagra, having improvement of cognitive function. So these are the questions that you'll be coming up with um, to come up with small articles to describe like a recipe, how much, what type, when, for instance, when should you exercise? And when you're looking through um, PubMed, all kinds of questions uh, you can ask, um, all kinds of um, articles come up with telomere length greater than a thousand. So if you use this, what they call the Boolean, Boolean connector, the word and. So I put in the word deep sleep and telomere length and found a study where um, they looked at astronauts out in space um, and telomere length. And they showed that space flights um, cause oxidative stress, damages the DNA, causes mitochondrial dysregulation, showing this epigenetic changes, gene modulation, um, telomere length gets shortened, 
and they actually have a shift in the microbiome of the gut. So very stressful um, event. So our course goals, again, are to find answers using scientific literature, create these evidence-based conclusions, make clear recommendations, and to present the information to a wide audience, um, not just to not just to scientists and on the other extreme, not just to um, individuals, but you want a whole population that will find your article interesting to read and information that they can use for themselves and for patients. So to do this, we're gonna to have to develop some um, improved writing skills. And the best strategies that I've come up with are to first create an outline, we'll do that together, and begin writing in just small chunks. And then we'll take all these sections that we develop all through the semester to create this article. Each, each have your own article. Um, share it, peer reviews to help improve it. And through that, through that um, strategy, go through a lot of revisions to make it easy to read enjoyable to read, but packed with scientific information. So Stephen King, one of my favorite authors, not that I um, enjoy the story so much, but one of his uh, books was called On Writing. So he wrote a book on how to write. So that, I don't know about you, but the majority of people feel that that first um, that first moment of writing is the hardest, the first, the beginning, and then going through and revising it over and over again. So a lot of people um, take the philosophy that you know you can if it's only a couple pages long you can procrastinate, but the problem is you need to write it many many times, revising it. So Michael Crichton, another good author. Books aren't written, they're rewritten, including your own. It's the hardest thing to accept, especially after the seventh rewrite hasn't quite done it. So that's why we're going to start very early in writing the article. And then to do that, the best thing is to break it down into small parts. So we're not going to start at the introduction. We're not going to start at the beginning. We're going to start here in the evidence section. And then we're going to develop the article, starting from the evidence, finding the scientific articles, and then developing one chunk at a time. And then we're going to print, um, have this printed as well as put on an e-publication for um, the website or and for, and for Canvas, of course. So over the semester, we're going to pick out the topic choice, an outline. You're going to start having rough drafts, peer reviews, a PowerPoint presentation, final draft, and finally to the printer on week 14. These are the next few slides are just some of the examples of what the um, articles look like. So this is one on aromatherapy for anxiety. And she came up with multiple references, but in the end only used three substantial references that are described here in um, very concise um, paragraphs to describe each of those three references. And then clear recommendations on how to use it. Another one, mindful eating. Another two page article, sleep on it, demand something from your sleep. This is a fantastically interesting article. I love this article. Again, she looked at many um, references, came down with these three um, very robust um, references to describe um, how you can be creative during sleep. So question for you would be, what type of presentation requires more preparation time? A short presentation, a medium length, 
or a long presentation, like a 10 page paper. Okay, this is a question asked of uh, former President Wilson. How long does it take you to prepare one of your speeches? So he responded, that depends on the length. If it's a 10 minute speech, it takes me all of two weeks to prepare it. If it's half hour speech, it takes me a week. If I can talk as long as I want, it takes no preparation at all. I'm ready now. So getting um, everything you want to say in a very short, concise, two-page article is going to take all of the semester to get right and lots and lots of revisions. Well, now I'd like to go into just um, some of the grading and um, the rubric of the semester. It's going to be broken down to a roughly a thousand points. Um, and these, this is going to be noted on Canvas. And you can follow on the modules with what are, what um, submissions are due. All of the quizzes are going to be on the topics that are discussed through um, the previous week. And those will be open notes, open access. So following the modules, you'll see the modules. Um, and then through each of these modules, starting with week two will be the weekly quizzes. Also within that will be um, um, the top hat participation. And the also with um, part of the class is your presentation, pre presenting your PowerPoint presentations. And I'll be listing your name um, and the date. And these will all begin. Um, actually, it's going to probably start beginning just um, before spring break. So we have to have in-person classes for not only the class participation, but also during class time, we're going to use that period, uh, a, short, a short part of that period to um, develop um, the writing and using team projects to analyze some of the articles of which some of those articles you're perfectly welcome to use in your own, um, in your own topics. So Zoom is going to be available, but it's only going to be for students that are um, previously approved. If somebody is sick, um, can't make it to class, um, but that has to be approved before the class begins. So one of the um, things people are always really concerned about is their weight. And they, um, I think, er really starting earlier, we, we worry more about our appearance, our looks, and that is always equated to weight. And then as we get older, what we worry about is actually cognitive function. So I like to talk about weight and some of the, um, what causes excess body weight. Um, those will be in the very first lectures of the class. So we're gonna talk about um, eating and um, appetite, satiety, and the hormones that affect that. So going on to these six factors, um, this is going to be one of the questions for the top hat questions. Which do you think contributes most to excess body weight? Supplements, food timing, food types, stress, sleep, activity. And Interestingly, most people have the um, thought that it is how much you eat and how much you move. But in fact, it's been shown that some of the contributors to weight that are just, if not more important, are actually sleep, stress, food timing, intermittent fasting, all of that has, and med medications all have a huge impact on excess body weight. So the class talks about hunger, satiety, why dieting is not sustainable, um, 
uh, calorically restricted dieting or fad dieting, really what I should say is not sustainable. We're gonna go through circadian rhythms. We will talk about activity and exercise and how important that is, um, not just for weight, but actually more importantly for mental um, function, for sleep, improvement of sleep. And then speaking of sleep, we'll be talking about the different stages of sleep, how that impacts um, weight, impacts um, beta amyloid deposition in the brain and Alzheimer's disease. Talk about meditation and the different med uh, medical supplements, herbal supplements, medications, prescribed medications, and then talk about bariatric medicine and surgery. All of these affecting epigenetics and telomere lengths. So starting with the next lecture, we're going to start um, brainstorming about your topic choices. And I'm going to give um, you some of my suggestions on how to search for those topics and how to start looking for scientific articles um, by using maybe a little different method than you talk about in um, some of your other classes. So this is what I call the Judy way. And we're going to start talking about eating, satiety, the brain divisions, the endocrine pathways, and then why dieting is doomed to failure. Any questions? Um, happy to um, talk to you about those with uh, either emails or in person. Hopefully we'll be able to see you in person and talk to you soon.